Welcome back to Legacy Builders with Brian Delaney. There are certain things that I do every day and every week that keep me sharp, and give me the ability to scale my company and our clients past seven and eight figures. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about rhythms, otherwise known as rituals. I'll help you understand why you need good rhythms in your life to become a legacy builder, and I'll share some ideas on where you could start. Let's dive in. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Legacy Builders with Brian Delaney. Brian, today we are going to dive into a question that so many people have, which is the lifestyle of an eight-figure entrepreneur. Everybody wants to know, you know, how do you spend your time each day? How do you spend your time each week? And I think sometimes they just want to duplicate it. Uh, but today we're going to really dive into what does your lifestyle look like and how does that lifestyle support you know, your dreams in the business that you have. Yeah. And I think, I think what's important to note before we jump into mine, I think it's important to note, you know, one of the things that I asked Tony when I was at his uh, private resort in Fiji was I asked him about his morning rituals. And, you know, he talks a lot about that, right. At his events and in his books. And, and it was interesting because, being in a private setting with him where he's a lot more relaxed and calm and chill, his response was it's constantly changing. It's a little bit different depending on where he is, what he's doing. Um, alternatively, I did serve, a little, serve at one of his events and I got to see some of those morning rituals that he does because he – even after three decades, this was in 2014 when I served – so after three decades, he was still, you know, had a paper checklist where he would check off the things that he would do in the morning before the big day of going through UPW and using and doing that whole uh, firewalk experience. And uh, it was really impressive to see that, you know, even three decades doing, you'd, you'd figure that you'd have that rhythm down, right? But even for him, someone like him, he still, you know, has that checklist. And, and that's what works for him, right? So I think what I want to say is that we all have a different approach, right? Some of us really enjoy waking up early in the morning. Some of us like to stay up late, right? And so you've got to find your rhythm. Like what, what's your rhythm? I, I found mine. I mean, over, over this journey of personal development, I started in 2004, 2005, started really, and en I entered the journey of improving myself. Uh, up until that point, I really, no one spent any time on it. My teachers, my family, my, you know, no one really opened my eyes uh, to the world of personal development. So I think everyone's is going to be a little bit different. For me, uh, one of the big components is what I call morning rhythms. Okay. It's more like a dance. It's like ri morning rituals, but it's, I call them rhythms. And one of the first things that I do when my feet hit the floor in the morning is what I call rise and alkalize or rise and energize. And for me, what that looks like is water and greens or water and lemon or better yet, coconut water and greens or coconut water and, uh, and, and um, some type of energy blend to really get your system kick-started. Um, I now do a keto drink um, that I just love and I've been doing that for probably about five years now. About 10 years ago, I was strict on water and an energy blend, right? So I think, again, as you um, find stuff that you resonate with, your body resonates with, you start to make that a part of your lifestyle, right? So for me, it's rise and alkalize is number one. Number two is movement and exercise. And that could be uh, getting up, moving, walking around the block. That could be getting up, moving, getting on the rebounder. Tony Robbins is a big fan of that. I love that because it creates a lot of energy and really drains the lymphatic system. But it's just getting up, moving, and getting into motion, right? At the same time, expressing gratitude and appreciation. I think that's a huge component of success, right? Being grateful for the things that are in our experience, the things that are in our life, right? A lot of times I'll start with, thank you, Lord, for the eyes I have to see and the ears I have to, see, to hear, Thank you for the beautiful home that I, that I get to create in. And that just creates a snowball effect of the things that 
I'm grateful for. And, and I think that it would probably produce similar uh, experience for you. If you begin to think about all the things you're grateful for, you really think about it, we have a lot to be grateful for. The more you spend energy on what you're grateful for, typically you're going to be grateful for more things, right? If you're constantly in a state of complaining about what's in your experience, then you're going to get more of that. And so I don't know about you, but I like to have more experiences of gratitude and being appreciative of the things that are in my experience, the people that are in my experience, um, and more of that comes into my experience because I'm expressing that gratitude. In fact, it's something that we do with my daughter, right? Is what are you grateful for? And we try to instill that at a really young age because I wasn't instilled with that as a kid. A lot of this stuff wasn't around when my parents were were young, right? So that's another thing that I do, like to do to kind of jumpstart my day, right? Focus breathing is another one, right? And there's so many different breath working, you know, techniques from you can hold, you know, breathe in four, hold for four seconds, and then exhale for four seconds. I mean, that's one. Uh, it's called box breathing, right? So you're box breathing um, or you're oxygenating your system where you just, just really in, you know, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale super fast. That's going to oxygenate your system. It's going to oxygenate your brain. In fact, it means simply try it. I mean, breathing in and out of your mouth super fast. Now you got to be careful. <laughs> you don't want to pass out, uh, but that's going to flood your system with oxygen. And there's so many scientific studies you can do research on your own time on the benefits of that. Box breathing is what Navy SEALs do, right? They they do box breathing. So breathe in four, hold four, exhale four, hold four, inhale four, right? It's called box breathing. Um, I've That's helped me tremendously shift my state really quickly and get into a, a different energetic state. Another component that I like to do is called vi- vivid visualization. That's where... That's at you typically for me, it's after my breathing exercises. It's after my gratitude and appreciation. Now I'm beginning to visualize my future, the way in which I want to create it. Okay, think about it. Everything that you've created in your life for the most part, not all cases, but for the most part, it's because you've thought about it and you've created it in your mind first, right? Anything that's created is typically going to be created in your mind first, and then it expresses itself. So it's a good habit to get into to start thinking about the things that you want to create, the experiences that you want to have, right? It all starts in your mind. And so you're uh, in, the, in, the, in the pilot seat of that, really. Okay, so start to think about the experiences. Start to think about the vacations you want to take. Start to think about the audiences that you want to impact. Start to think about the things that you get to do with your significant other or with your kids, right? Those are things that I think about. Right. And then lastly, it's what, what, what Tony Robbins calls Kaizen, which is a Japanese term for constant and never ending improvement, right? And this has really served me on my journey, but it's, you know, reading, it's, it's listening to audiobooks, podcasts like this, shows, right? consuming information that's going to stretch you, that's going to challenge you, that's going to uh, help you to think outside the box that you're in, right? Getting that perspective is vital for growth. And, and you're either growing or you're dying. You're never really standing still. We're never standing still. So what is it that you're inputting on a day-to-day basis? Who is influencing your life? The fact that you're listening to this is great because you're getting stretched you're getting your mind's expanding uh for a new possibility Mm -hmm. and i love that you talk about morning rhythms in a way where it's built around uh some of your desires it's built around like getting rooted in being healthy and i think as people will see throughout this episode they realize uh your rhythms of an eight-figure entrepreneur are really about serving you well so that you can serve the people around you best which a big piece of that is also like fun and travel. So tell me about this, this next piece. Now that you have your morning rhythms and you're showing up as your best self, um, it's, why is it important to incorporate fun into this? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I believe you have to be filled up and overflowing in order to really, truly serve well, uh, for me and for our family, we love to travel and we love to have fun. And so one of the things that I've been doing for, for years now is, you know, I started it back in like 2012 is go to Hawaii for a month or two at a time. 
And that might seem crazy to some people. Uh, in my business, I can work from anywhere in the world. I can be in Hawaii for two months. I can be in Alaska for two months. I can be in the mountains for two months. I can be in Florida for two months. It doesn't really matter where I am in the world. I can still create. I can still produce. Now, for those of you that are stuck in one location, that's going to be hard. Um, but for me, I, we like to travel as a family. Steph and I love to travel. We met in Hawaii. It's one of our special places that we love to go to. Now we go to Alaska in the summer and go fishing uh, for salmon, for, for halibut, and enjoy the outdoors where we get to, you know, literally witness eagles flying down and, um, you know, catching fish and food out of your hand, basically, practically, you're, you know, tossing it up for them to eat, you know, things like that, or spending a week in Lake Powell with friends, completely off grid, no cell service, or going in the mountain snowboard, like I'm about to do in Aspen, Colorado, with friends or taking uh, a family vacation and going and seeing, um, you know, our, 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 my brother, my sister, their families, their kids, right? That's another example. Or spending a month in the mountains during the summer, right? Um, these are just some of the examples of things that, that I have baked into, you know, my lifestyle, uh, things that I enjoy doing, like taking my daughter down to the botanical gardens to get out and smell the fresh air and to see flowers and butterflies and all of these things, right? They make our life rich. And I think it's important. The reason why I go to say Hawaii for a month or two at a time is I, I call it my, the, a, a reset. And for me, it takes about, I don't know about you, but for me, it takes about a good week just to get settled into a place and then finally able to decompress and get into a place where I've hit that button of reset. Now everybody's different. Some people can do it in a couple of days. For me, it's like a week or two. <laughs> That's why I go for a month or two at a time because I charge forward in so many ways in my, in my business and in the business of other people that I serve that when I go off grid to reset, I'm disconnecting from technology a lot. I'm fully immersing myself into nature like the ocean or the mountains and quieting all of the noise, right? There's so much noise these days, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's important. Uh, you, I don't believe that you can fully be creative if you have all of those programs running in the background of your mind. You know, think about it like a computer. You've got 50 tabs open. And you're wondering why you can't be creative. It's got all of these tabs running. Or think about your closet. If your closet is a disaster, it's a complete bomb hit it, and there's stuff everywhere, you know, you tend to be disorganized in your mind. So for me, personally, we like to travel because for me, for us, I don't know about you, but when we travel, we see new things. Mm -hmm. We create new experiences. We meet new people, right? All of that, to me, has been a catalyst for coming up with and creating new ideas. And really as an entrepreneur in the expert business that we're in, we are always in a state of creation. I remember when I told Russell Brunson, I was in his mastermind for about five years, and I told him that I traveled to Hawaii for two, one or two months at a time. And the look on his face was priceless. You know, He couldn't even comprehend the thought. But the reality is, is that even though I might be in Hawaii for a month or two at a time, I'm still creating. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as entrepreneurs, as people that are, you know, in this expert business, we're serving people with our expertise. We're not just in a state of consumption. We need to do a certain level of consumption, but I would say that you need to do probably double, triple, or quadruple the amount of production, creation, that you do consumption, right? And you'll have seasons, right? You'll have seasons where you're creating more than you're consuming and you have seasons when you're consuming more than you're creating. And that's, that's, okay. that's okay, that's fine. But I think as entrepreneurs and people that are in the expert business, serving other people with our expertise, we've got to find a way to create value and not regurgitated, rehashed content from other people, but true creative, uh, concepts and ideas that are unique and different in your marketplace. Yeah. Right. 
in today's ecosystem and climate of the expert business, a lot of people like to copy, funnel hack, model, whatever you want to call it, you're duplicating someone else's creative thought. So what you I don't see a lot of, and I would like to see more of it, is give yourself the permission to create something that's fresh, new, and different. Mm-hmm. I would propose that it's going to make a significant difference to your bottom line when you lead that way versus just creating something because some, you saw someone else creating something and you thought that's what you needed to do. Yeah. Right? You stand out when you have something that's novel, that's prolific, rather than blending in and being like everybody else. Okay? So I would even say that a lot of people are stuck in business, stuck from hitting seven figures, stuck from fitting, hitting eight figures because they're stuck in that trap of not creating something that's prolific, Mm -hmm. that's innovative, that's different, that's unique, right? Think about my, uh, the, the, the one thing that comes to mind as I say that is my, you know, one of my campaigns that I launched called the free golden ticket, where I dressed up like Willy Wonka, my wife dressed up like an Oompa Loompa, and we went all out. And you can, you can see it at freegoldenticket.com, but we went all out on creating a campaign that would stand out, be different, unique than anything in the marketplace. And, it, and it's generated millions of dollars in revenue, amazing relationships and partnerships because we thought outside the box and were willing to do something that was a little bit crazy, mm-hmm. a little bit crazy, right? At first it was like the feedback that I got, I was in a mastermind with about, I don't know, about 50 people, Russell included. And, and I presented the idea of what we we're creating, what we were launching. And it was interesting because we had several people that were in the room that said, oh, I don't think it's going to do well at all. I think it's going to flop, up, up, up. They came up with all these reasons why it would fail. And then the other people that were encouraging, that were supportive, that were uh, giving creative advice that would actually add value to it. And it ended up doing really well. But I do believe it's because we were not thinking in the same box that everybody else is thinking in. And you got to the way my brain works on a day-to-day basis, and this is really part of lifestyle for me, is how do I create something that's better, different, unique than than everybody else? How do I, because when you create something that's better, different, unique than everybody else, you're different. You're unique in your own way, right? Yeah. And I think what you're getting at is you wouldn't be able to think in these creative ways, come up with these creative ideas, truly set yourself apart unless you had that time to truly reset. And I, think, Correct. you know, some people talk about work hard, play hard. You know, you go to Hawaii for a month or two, you have these resets, you get to travel, you truly are refreshed. And then you come back and you have rhythms to your work week. You know, you create content on Mondays. Like, tell me a little bit more about some of the disciplines of when you come back, like it's time to work and it's time to yeah, do what you need to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a lot of high, high, um, high level earners or high level, you know, high, you know, seven, eight, nine figure earners, you know, they feel guilty taking time off from their business. I, I hear that a lot. I mean, I hear that a lot from my friends, colleagues that are performing at a high level, building big brands, and they feel guilty for taking that time off. And, and for me, you know, doing this for 17 years, I realized for me, and this might be different for you, but I realized for me that it's so vital to take that time to, to get away Take that time to reset. Take that time to put yourself in a new environment that's going to shift your mindset. Super, super, super important. Now, in terms of my work schedule, the way I organize my week is that Mondays are my days for content production. So content for the podcast, uh, content for challenges, for webinars, for courses. Mondays are my days that are dedicated for production. And the reason for me being Mondays is I get the whole weekend to think about it. So I get to spend the weekend when I'm out and about with my daughter and my wife. I get to, I get to think about and mull over ideas of when I'm going to come into the studio and I'm going to film for the show or the podcast, right? So for me, that's just what works for me. Maybe it's Friday for you or Wednesday for you. I don't know. But being someone that's in the expert industry or in the expert business, you will want to get in a habit and a cadence of creation and you'll want to have time for preparation and then you want to want to have time for creation and distribution and you know and producing that value for other people mm-hmm. uh, because that's just something you got to get used to doing 
right? You're, if you're in the expert business, which I would assume that you are, or you're looking to get into it, we have to constantly create. Okay, it's kind of like advertising on Facebook, right? You don't just set an ad up, tee it up, and run, let it run for 10 years, right? No, I mean, you're, you're setting up, you have, my, my team's pushing out 50 new ads a week, testing all different types of images and videos and text and, and copy and all of that stuff. So get used to it mm -hmm. <laughs> because this will be a behavior, that you, a lifestyle that you'll have to embrace if you want to be in the expert business. If you don't want to be in the expert business, then then you might not have to do that. But it's a good thing to be in. It's a good, it's a good, it's healthy to be in a state of creation, mm -hmm. adding value to other people's lives. Yeah. Right? And sometimes that might be for your clients. Sometimes it might be for ads. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be for your mm -hmm. team. And so when mm -hmm. we're just specifically talking about the lifestyle of an eight figure entrepreneur, you know, bringing in $10 million, that's a lot of money. And at some point, you're not going to be the smartest one in the room as far as what to do with that money. So talk to me about right. this element of um, having somebody else, having a team to help grow your money when you're at that level. Mm -hmm. I think eventually you'll have a team that's dedicated to, to growing, preserving, you know, your money, right? I mean, eventually, I think where you'll end up you know, at least I've seen a lot of people that are in the eight, nine and up figures, they have a family office. Okay. So if you haven't heard of what a family office is, basically a family office is a group of people that are dedicated to growing your net worth and your investments. They're, they have specialized expertise in areas like real estate or crypto or NFT or private equity investments, right? Like businesses that you can throw money at, right? That's at least how I roll. I've got a family office. I've got people that have deep, specialized knowledge and skill sets, and they have the results that go with it, right? I think you'll notice that theme here, right? That other people are looking to pay you because you have a unique expertise. You have a unique and specialized skill set that produces results. Well, the same thing goes for your finances, right? So you're going to want to eventually, as you begin to accumulate wealth, as you begin to uh, accumulate your finances, you're not probably going to be the one unless your unless your specialized knowledge is in stock trading or in real estate or crypto or whatever it might be, right? Unless your expertise is there, you're likely not going to be the best to be making those decisions, right? Um, for example, um, one of my financial advisors, um, he told me about an investment that uh, can produce a certain daily ROI on that investment and that he was going to introduce me to the, the, the firm, the company that specializes in that. And a lot of his high figure net worth, his, you know, eight figure, nine figure and billionaire clients use them. Right. So for me, I've got this guy, but then I've also got my family office. And so the way that that, that I approach it is I might get an investment opportunity from say him or for some, from say someone else. And what I do is I send it to the family bank. So I send it to my family bank who they're in charge of managing and growing my money. So I give it to them and then I let them do the vetting, right? Cause I'm likely not going to be the best at vetting it, right? I've got motions tied to it. I've got all, all types of things that are tied to not really making the best decisions. So I would highly encourage you, you know, when you get to a, a place financially that it makes sense, uh, you'll eventually want to have people that are in your corner and that's all they obsess about. They obsess about growing, protecting, um, and helping you accumulate more with your resources. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times that's in back in your own business, right? I mean, one of my best investments that trumps practically everything else is our own business, right? I have predictability. If I'm going to put money into advertising, I know what that advertising is going to reproduce. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, you're your best investment. And then secondly, your business is your best investment. Outside of that, then you'll have investments, whether it's real estate, whether it's um, crypto, whether it's NFT, whether it's private equity investments. You know, I thought it was interesting, actually, when I was with Tony Robbins uh, in his backyard here in Florida, he broke down his investment strategy. And what, what was really great is he also shared with us 
his private equity uh, firms that he invests with. But he, he looks at it from three different perspectives. So he, he'll throw just money at something. That's number one. Number two, he'll throw his brand, right? He'll attach his personal brand to it. Or third, he'll, he'll invest consulting time, right? Where he gets paid for that consulting. Like, usually what he does though, the way that he explained it was he'll do a combination. So he might throw his money and his brand, or he might throw his consulting and his brand, or he might throw all three of them at it and then have even more upside, mm-hmm. you know, more skin in the game from that brand. And so it's, it's interesting, right? You know, Tony's worth 7 billion plus. Um, it's fascinating to see at that level, cause that's a whole nother level of how do you, how does someone like that make financial decisions for growing their money? Mm-hmm. Right. And so I just thought that was, uh, that was fascinating, but I would highly encourage you as you get into accumulation mode, once you've cracked the code, once you've figured out how to sell what you sell and you get really good at it, you're going to start accumulating. At that point, you've got to put your resources, your hard earned resources into the hands of people who have specialized knowledge and specialized results. And please, 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 when you're interviewing those resources or even interviewing those people that you're going to trust with your money, look at their trait, their, their, their track record, look at their history, look, talk to five or 10 people that they serve to talk about the experience of what they've been able to help them reproduce. Right. It's the smartest thing that you can do. Yeah. And again, you know, we've kind of mentioned this a couple of times throughout this episode, but a lot of this is custom to you. Like you're not necessarily saying, hey, here's how Brian Delaney lives his day and you go do it. I think that it seems like it's a lot about recognizing what you need, Mm -hmm. recognizing the time that you need to rest, the time that you need to create and really building a rhythm that's going to continue to accelerate, you know, the gifts and the value you can bring other people. So as we bring this to a close, um, I'd love to just get like any parting words kind of of encouragement uh, and action to our audience for people that they're, they're trying to figure out that lifestyle. They're, they're trying to figure out what that day to day looks like for them. I think it's different for everyone. We've got stages of life as well. I mean, as I've had a daughter and now a son, right? My day is different than it was three years ago yeah. when, when they weren't here with us. Right. So now my nights, my days, sometimes my mornings look a little different than when I was single or when I was, you know, didn't have kids. Right. So I think there's seasons of life where you have to adopt new rhythms. Right. Um, and you've got to, you have more pr- different priorities, right? I, it's, it, to me, it's a priority that I invest time, energy, and tension and create amazing experiences for my daughter. And so that becomes important. Yeah. Right. But I think overall, you know, if you embrace the mindset of Kaizen, it's a core value of mine and our families embrace that mindset of constant improvement, right? How can you, com- how can you continue to grow, improve, expand, right? For me, it's the experiences I, that I create. It's also the people that I listen to that I have in my corner, uh, giving me in, information, giving me wisdom, right? If you're in that state of Kaizen, constant growth, um, good things will come out of that, right? You'll be able to create amazing content for your audience because you have this mindset of Kaizen. You have this mindset of constant improvement, right? If you're not in that state of constant improvement, then you might, you, you likely won't create as well for your brand. So I think the big takeaway is from this is what, what, what fuels you? For me, what fuels me is, you know, spending time with my family, spending time with my daughter, taking them out of this experience and into new experiences, traveling, right? Experiencing different cultures, different people, different climates right? Um, Exploring the unknown is something that I found gives me creativity. It gives me insights that I might not have had if I was in my same day-to-day rituals every single day of the week, right? But But you have to figure that out for yourself, right? And 
you know, as you progress on your journey, you know, and as you evolve in your journey, it'll be different. It's kind of like I started this episode with how Tony Robbins talked about, you know, his rituals changing. They're not the same every day. Um, there are certain things that he does every day, uh, but depends, right? It depends on, you know, is he speaking at a four day immersive experience like UPW or is he in Fiji with his wife and family enjoying a vacation, right? So it's, 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 it's going to change. And I think change is one constant that we all must adopt and embrace. Um, that's, you know, these are some of the things that I do in my day to day lifestyle. Um, and a lot of them don't cost a lot of money, mm-hmm. right? Uh, a lot of this stuff doesn't require you to be, uh, an eight figure earner, right. you know, a lot of this stuff I did when I started, yeah. I, I did this back when I was broke and <laughs> when I, you know, when I was in, you know, student debt, working as a personal trainer, making 15 bucks an hour, a lot of these rhythms, these rituals, the things I did back then, right? I just continue to do them because I, they've helped me on my journey. Mm-hmm. So question becomes, what's, what is helping you to grow and evolve to become a better version of yourself, right? I think that's the question yeah. that you need to ask yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been gold. This has been awesome getting to talk about morning rhythms, um, traveling and taking that time to reset. Um, but also talking about some of the work rhythms that you should have and that you should always be creating. And that, uh, again, you're not going to do this alone. Um, who's going to be those people around you that are helping your money grow, helping you leverage your yeah. time in the best ways. So this has been really valuable and I encourage the listeners uh, head over to launchexpertise.com and check out some of the resources we have in the show notes to uh, learn even more. So Brian, thank you for your time and uh, we'll see everyone next time on Legacy Builders. Thank you for joining me on Legacy Builders and I would encourage you to come back to the next episode next week to get more clarity on your journey to launch your expertise online, scale your impact and build your legacy. If you're ready to get the process started of launching your expertise online the right way, then I recommend go to launchexpertise.com or maybe you're at a place where you're ready to really scale your expertise and your impact. Go to launchexpertise.com. There you'll have several options. Number one, you can get a free copy of my brand new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, which I share the secrets that have unlocked more than $300 million of results for my clients and partners in our own campaigns. You could also join a 33 days of coaching with me uh, that's free, where I give you insights and wisdom on your journey to launching your expertise and scaling your impact over the course of 33 days. And that's worth at least 5,000 bucks, but for right now, you can get it for free. And lastly, if you're someone who wants to take the absolute faster, smarter path when it comes to launching your expertise online and scaling your impact, I'd recommend scheduling a call with my team where we can see how we can support you to crush goals and generate seven or eight figures yourself in a short period of time. We have more awards than nearly anyone in the entire community, and for good reason. We would love to help you just like we've helped them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Legacy Builders.